So yeah, welcome again to our guest speakers and audiences. My name is Leo I'm, and I'm a partner at Star Consulting. Welcome to the last session of our Web3 um, Disruptors Week. You can join us live on YouTube or through our Metaverse channel, MetaBloom. The links can be found on our Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, in the last few days, we have talked about how to build a responsible Web3 economy, the Web3 mindset, currency, the potential paradigm shift that comes with Web3, investment, privacy, and security, gaming, and female disruptors. Today, we are going to look at MetaFi, the financial infra infrastructure in the metaverse. Like it or not, metaverse is already here um, for us to explore and create. The new business models that have come into being have brought a lot of excitement to startups. So what infrastructure is needed for the, all of those to operate and what interesting financial products and services will we see? We have guests, uh, we have guests working on different aspects of MetaFi joining us today. They are um, Kevin Ren, founder of Meta Estate. Is Kevin here yet? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, Kevin. And, um, and um, Eugenie is not here yet. And we have Victor Zheng, co-founder of WeiPiggy, Henry Wang, co-founder and CEO of SmartMesh, and Brian Xing, founder of Optic Network. Uh, first of all, can I get all of you to introduce yourselves and your platform briefly to our audience, please? Um, let's start with um, Kevin. Okay. Hi, everyone. Very nice to be here. And thanks for Neil for the introduction. And um, yeah, I'm Kevin, uh, Kevin Ren. I'm a founder of uh, Menta Estate. And I'm also a founding partner of uh, Consensus Labs. Well, uh, Menta Estate, as you may know, uh, it is a Mentaverse service provider. So we help uh, users to access uh, Mentaverse, uh, try to help them to access easily. So we do constructions, designing, and uh, also we do advertisement, uh, marketing, uh, as well as we make uh, NFTs in the Metaverse. Also, we create Metaverse funds uh, for uh, in the Metaverse. Uh, and also for Consensus Lab, it's uh, Web3, uh, we, we use to call crypto uh, investment. So we, uh, we funded uh, since 2017. So uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, um, like uh, long lasting uh, crypto funds. So we have also involved in many uh, projects. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. That sounds very exciting. Um, what, let's go to Victor. Oh, hello uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Victor. Uh, thank, thank you for having me here. <laughs> Uh, I'm co-founder of uh, Vipiki. Uh, personally, uh, I think uh, I, I participated in crypto in uh, 2017 uh, for ICO investment. So we, I have done a lot of investment before. <laughs> so uh, Vipiki is uh, the, the, the project uh, uh, what I'm working for. So uh, Vipiki is an open source, uh, non-custodial crypto assets the new market protocol. Uh, in VPG's market, users can deposit their crypto assets to earn interest or borrow other crypto assets by paying interest. Uh, based on our multi-chain strategy, we have launched on Ethereum, OKS, BNB, Chain, Polygon, Echo, Uptrend, Optimism, Moonriver, Harmony, Oasis, and the Moonbeam Totally 11 networks. Uh, big news for the uh, audience. So uh, we are going to launch our lock drop event. So it's a big, big opportunity uh, for you to participate in and get win some rewards like uh, uh, 240k OP tokens and uh, uh, seven, 75 million uh, WP, WPC tokens. Uh, so that's it, I think. Thank you, Rat. Thank you very much, Victor. Um, next, mm -hmm. let's go to Henry, please. Well, everyone, uh, 
Thank you for having me here. And I'm the founder for Smart Mesh and the advisor for Meshbox and uh, MetLife. Mm -hmm. So I coined the term and Web 3.0 back in 2003 when I was uh, working in, in the United States in a semiconductor companies. At the same time, I'm pursuing my PhD study in Washington University in St. Louis where, in the computer science. So, so in the year 2003, I, this is my first time I heard Web 2.0. So it's different from what I'm trying to do. Therefore, I named my uh, projects and classified it as Web 3.0. So it's the first time I'm calling the Web 3.0 and it's a linked data and social linked data and with multilingual, cross-lingual, and the translations so that uh, you know people from any nations and uh, you know they can communicate without borders so that's why i define it as one world one web and uh, at that time some people are laughing at me because the web 2 is still not there why you mentioned about web 3 but now it's time come so web 3 actually the the, the foundation for the open metaverse. Okay, so I'm happy to, you know, discuss and, uh, you know, with guests and uh, about the metaverse and the metafy today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Henry. Um, can we have Brian, please? Um, I know that Brian has participated in the previous panel and he has already introduced himself and his business, but can I just uh, ask you to introduce yourself again, please? Yeah, thank you. So glad to be here. And let me introduce you in different ways. Uh, I'm Brian, uh, the founder of Optic Net. So I call myself an internet veteran. I uh, have been through the Web 1, Web 2, now in Web 3 in the past 25 years. So currently, our vision is to really build an infrastructure, business-grade, NFT-based infrastructure. Uh, for the metaverse uh, web 3.0 uh, so uh, because right now we feel uh, well, a lot of uh, innovation ideas are pretty exciting but we need to have a solid ground to support it uh, the infrastructure is really important uh, especially with a uh, financial based DeFi or financial based infrastructure to support digital assets uh, by saying that, uh, I feel, well, uh, it's easy to say you are building an infrastructure, but whether it will become an infrastructure, there's a long way to go, right? So that's why we are doing a lot of practice in the past few years. So because, we're, for example, we are running our Optic uh, NFT marketplace, which is an application uh, to really test the, well, everything underneath the water surface, which is the infrastructure. And soon you will also see some uh, pretty interesting, uh, uh, well, use case uh, NFT applications uh, to be published by us and our partners. So by doing all those, we, we want to build a solid uh, infrastructure to really support the business in Web3.0 and Metaverse. Yeah, that's uh, something we're doing. I'd love to share more today. Thank you so much, Brian. I'm going to start with a very general question. Um, what is your view on Web3? Do you believe it's the future? Um, can I start with Brian, please? Okay, yeah. Well, uh, well I think it's definitely the future, but uh, actually, I, I think Web3 Web is not... Uh, come from nothing, right? So it's uh, just a natural continuation of our uh, technology and human society. So uh, we, we're just in the this uh, stage of the history right now. So uh, uh, the, the difference is, uh, well, because, uh, well, we all say, right? So web one is like a password login. Web two is a social account login. Web three is a wallet login. So the wallet login means that's the internet of value, uh, because uh, so so that it protects your property and your privacy. So like you own your data, you own your asset, uh, which which requires a strong support from the infrastructure, especially the technology infrastructure, not the legal paper, right? So uh, NFT, in my view, is represents all kind of uh, tokenized assets, 
which uh, which can cover everything, not just uh, digital collectibles. So yeah, I think that we are in the right timing right now. But on the other side, I think uh, it's uh, still in very early stage. The infrastructure is not mature, and uh, a lot of uh, things are in the experiment experimental stage. But it's evolving very quickly. So uh, I think we are just like we're back to 98, right? So it's an internet bubble, internet blooming early days. Uh, we, we can see a lot of things uh, uh, are built, uh, maybe have no special sense, but what well, is a starting point. So this actually encourages us uh, really spend more time to build the infrastructure and uh, build some useful use cases to uh, really uh, inspire uh, the industry. And uh, uh, no matter it's transformation from Web 2 to Web 3 or some native, uh, pretty innovative uh, things uh, born, native born in Web 3. So I'm pretty optimistic to that. Yeah, so yeah, I, I see it's definitely, it's current, not, not just future, right? So. <laughs> Paul, thank you so much, Brian. Um, we just have um, new guest joining us. Can you can you can you see us and hear us, Eugene? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you. Hi. How how do I say your name properly? Uh, Eugene. My name is Eugene. Eugene. Yeah, company is called Embly. Hey to everyone. Yeah, I'm I'm here more from like traditional financial institutions. We build uh like like a bank. Uh, Get a license. We issue debit cards. We are um, participant of Visa um, startup program in the United States. We work in Europe, uh, also in Singapore, and uh, yeah, we are engaged in crypto. Um, yeah, looking to looking to Web three technology is like a um, kind of useful instruments around blockchain to to implement some some strategies uh, and tools around around crypto from customer perspective and yeah um, as Brian mentioned uh, it's pretty uh, like uh, we are so positive in this technology and hopefully will be like uh, next generation like internet, uh, so basically internet is uh, like distributed and um, is like distributed by its nature. So uh, it is not something kind of new like technology from internet perspective, but uh, it's like era of serverless applications where web applications go to blockchain instead of servers. And uh, yeah, a lot of work uh, should be done here is like from infrastructural perspective to be able to provide access to data to all of Web3 apps to do, to, do it, to do it the right way, to get data immediately, to get information like in a secure way and to make, to make a smooth interaction of customer with data. But yeah, we are so positive in this technology. Yeah. And hope Thank we will you very do things. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um well, I was asking the question, um, a very general question about Web3. I think um Eugene has just answered part of it as well. Um can we move to can we move to Victor? What do you think about Web3? Do you believe is the future? Oh well. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, we should know what is the Web three. So, uh, where's the difference from uh, Web two? I think the it's about who controls the web and who owns the data. So, in Web two, the Facebook, uh, Google, Amazon, uh, Apple, uh, the tech giants control everything. Uh, but in Web three, uh, each individual uh, have uh, has complete. Uh, control over their own data uh, rather than an entity controlling the ownership of data. Mm, if we mm, also, uh, uh, if we want to achieve a common goal, uh, then we create a DAO, not a, 
a company or any, or anything. Uh, and based on governance, we move things forward. Uh, to real life Web3, uh, I think we need uh, decentralized technologies uh, such as blockchain, cryptocurrencies, uh, and decentralized storage technologies, uh, etc. Uh, also in Web3, the financial services can be, uh, I think must be uh, permissionless and trustless. We call, actually, I will call it DeFi. Uh, take VPG as an example. Uh, anyone can interact with uh, VPG's uh, lending protocol to deposit and borrow money. No middleman, peer to peer. Uh, everything, including in interest uh, risk, uh, running through the rule determined by our algorithm in smart contracts. Um, uh, of course, uh, it's, I think it definitely the, the, the future um, because we actually, we own our data, which means we own uh, oil, uh, renewable oil. We, we can sell oil for economy returns and buy some assets that we want. Uh, once you experience uh, this, uh, you will love it. So uh, what I, my experiences have this. So I, I think it's also a re revolution and it's uh, re reversible. Uh, everyone will join in, uh, I think finally, everyone will join. And at present, more and more people are already have already uh, realized the value of Web3 and the, the value of their participation uh, in Web3. Uh, I think that's, that's it. Yeah, so, sounds like you are very positive about this as well. Yes. Um, let's move to Henry. What do you think about this? Yeah, so definitely Web3 is very important. And, uh, you know, Web3 actually starting from semantic web. So a lot of people don't really understand semantic web. So they think, okay, and the Web3 was coined like uh, in 2014 by Gavin Wood, but uh, that is a mistake. So before 2008, Web3 is defined already by the semantic web. So the semantic web is also very important to Metify. Okay, Metify is interoperability of all those blockchains, digital assets. So they actually are quite similar to the personal data, personal linked data that the semantic web has proposed. So when I first coined the web 3.0 back in 2003, it's about a personal data gathered together and can role among applications and also conquer the language barrier by machine translation. So in the metaverse, in the future, there are multiple blockchains. So the NFT digital assets should also be, you know, able to move from one blockchain to another to circle around in the whole open metaverse in a way that our personal data should be able to roll. Okay, so semantic web is not like you think it's about the meaning of the language. No, it's about the machine, how the machine can recognize, classify your data. So if you read the history of the internet, and uh, it is very clear in those articles and debates and before 20, 2008, the Web3, the personal data ownership, the privacy and the dissemination, which means you hold your data and you can hold your data and use your data in all kinds of applications. So there's no data silo created by the Web2 giants. So I, you know, this, this, this is the last session. So 
I think the last session should be the most important. Okay, I, I hope you know all the people in the crypto world and can know the history of the internet. The internet was created, was concepted by our founding father, Dick Leiter. At that moment, and he called it intergalactic computer net. It's purely decentralized. You know why it's decentralized from the very beginning? Because the internet is designed, was designed, you know, to avoid the three, you know, the, the, the war to destroy some single point and cause some single point of failure. Okay, so that's why at the very beginning, our internet is decentralized. Unfortunately, but naturally, in the very beginning, the internet protocols cannot be so complex. So it's not complicated. So even in the year of 1980, uh, so the IP protocol only can handle information. So it guarantees that the information can be transmitted over the internet and without loss. And, uh, but it cannot transmit like value. So there's no value layer in the internet protocols. That's why the application who control the billing functionality will control the internet. Okay, therefore, the big giants like uh, Facebook and Twitter and also carriers who build the network and the, you know, they actually handle all the billing issues. So they actually control the whole internet. So that's why the semantic web and also I have to mention the name of the inventor of the World Wide Web, so Tim Berners-Lee, and based on semantic web, and uh, he proposed decentralization. So because semantic web hold user user hold their own data, therefore he proposed people's net for people. Okay, so it started from 2006, the Web3. But at that time, we still don't, do not have ways to transmit uh, value and in a peer-to-peer -peer way. And in 2008, and the Satoshi, you know, actually published Bitcoin and paper. And uh, it's peer-to-peer, -peer and, uh, you know, payment and the test system is available. So that's a critical point for the Web3. And in 20, 2013, and BM proposed a DAC, so it's a, it's a, it's a DAO. And, uh, and uh, 2014, and uh, Gavin Wood proposed, okay, this uh, value transfer, and uh, you know he emphasized the Web3 combination. And in 2017, Smart Mesh realized that for the first time, Offline payment. So, so until 2017, the Web3 protocol stack is complete because offline payment is like uh, emergency power for the modern society or modern building. Okay, so from the very beginning, I coined the Web3 in 2003 up to like uh, until like 2017, 14 years have passed and the Web3 protocol is complete, okay? Upon this Web3 protocol, actually, applications can be built, but it's very hard to build. So Tim Berners-Lee designed solid project, which trying to, you know, implement the whole Web3 concept, but it's very difficult. And the Web2 giants doesn't work with him. You know why? They don't want to turn out their user data. They can make tons of money by profit. So they don't want to return users' data to users, right? So without blockchain, 
and we cannot ask Web2 giants return data to users. So Web3 is all about the revolution. So actually Web2 also starts from a social network. So Web3 will also start from a social network because because it's all about your yeah that, that's probably why that yeah. that is probably why uh, where metaverse comes into being like being a hot topic as well it's just a new way of how peter in, how people interact with each other um can yeah. i get henry to say something on this topic as well oh sorry Ke kevin i mean about web3 just briefly okay so I think Henry talked a lot about technical. So maybe I talk something uh, different in general way, maybe from the point of view of uh, venture capital. Uh, well, also uh, we we re, we considering Web three industry is just as a maybe a, another industry, same similar industries. So uh, like uh, uh, venture capital chasing each industry. We analyze the data protocol, uh, data and uh, user behavior, everything uh, to find which industry is emerging. So uh, we currently we realize that uh, indeed Web three is a emerging industry uh, because it is evolving quite fast, uh, and there is a lot of uh, funds, money, talent, people. Uh, involved in it. Uh, uh, for example, like um, um, Web3, that is involving like since from the very beginning, there's a public chain, DeFi, game file, and uh, maybe an NFT, Metaverse, social file, everything. So it's changing greatly and quickly. And also, uh, everybody nowadays are talking about uh, Web3. Everybody is claiming himself involved in Web3 not only in the capitals but also projects so that's why we think this is a quite good step i'm not saying i'm not saying that um, web3 yeah web3 is the future but uh, web3 may go some wrong directions in uh, terms yeah but uh, anyway it is a good trail uh, to test the errors so it's it's kind of very uh, very good start so we also uh, started to involve in web3 since last year so and we uh, focus most of the time and energy in uh, metaverse. So I, I I think there is a, a good try anyway. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, I guess that like uh, many of you have just mentioned, um, Web three is this next generation technology which was democrat uh, democratic and decentralized internet environment, and metaverse is a new digital space that includes health, game, entertainment, social interaction, um, education, so on and so forth, mm. that will employ a Web3 technologies. No doubt, there will be a whole new financial world that implements the decentralized solutions. Then we've got the term MetaFi, which blends the metaverse and DeFi, decentralized finance. But what is this MetaFi like in your view? And would it be a brand new thing? Well, will it involve a bit of traditional stuff as well? Um, shall can we start from Eugene, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, in regards from in regards to like technical perspective and uh, like overall, uh, uh, what is better like? Uh, in regards to DeFi or or MetaFi or what uh, or or just or just overall to go through because uh, just kind of different things for me uh, and okay um, uh, DeFi is like um, is like a way of new way to interact like um, in financial ser services. Like from from perspective of like uh, traditional some institution, it's a bit different rather than um, rather than current uh, like financial system, and uh, it's uh, it might be an 
um, it might be some some strange for traditional banks and this in, in institution to understand how to uh, like how to work with that because um, it's like uh, be your own bank and uh, I might extend that term like be your own central bank. You might issue your coins. You might uh, you might uh, you might launch your decentralized apps, uh, but uh, it, uh, the main issue here for uh, for the adoption step is like to find to find right place of all of all current participants in this world because our world actually is decentralized. Our world is actually distributed, and we already communicate in different manner. We we we. Communicate. We uh, transfer money to each other. We uh, we process that, and banks and central banks and all financial institutions are formed not just from nothing. They're formed just like from uh, from 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 some purpose. Some purpose of some institutions might be lost during this process, like evolu- like evolutionary. But um, while participating, while we are participating in decentralized financial world. We find place for each other, uh, for each uh, for each of us, like to find a a good place. How we might be useful for that, not just from um, not just from consuming perspective, but from uh, like the value perspective. It's very important. And in regards to uh, metaverse, uh, something like new, something like brand new. Uh, not technology, but a space uh, which is formed, and uh, it um, we might be mistaken when, like, all of the companies want to create their own metaverse. What is this like? Like, hey, this is my metaverse. This is my blockchain. Uh, instead of instead of collecting power and and creating something new and participating in some like open source projects to power some uh, some new uh, some new space so overall uh, metaverse is something is like being is, that that might be implemented um, on top of on top of existing infrastructure of course uh, so uh, Henry mentioned like uh, IP protocol. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. The IP protocol is like uh, used for for communication purpose, and that uh, that what we need, uh, except like uh, protocols to discover each other in the internet. How we communicate with each other and pure P two P is not possible at all. So that. That's an issue because P2P is done through some intermediate parties. So in case of Web3 or DeFi, it's like uh, super nodes or some or some other intermediate parties which are responsible for for com- communication. Um, as for me, Web3 and uh, Web3 and it's more like. Web three and the, and DeFi is more like about um, is more about rating is more about rating or of each participant so everyone can see it and decide uh, who uh, who are they they would like to work with or not so uh, metaverse metaverse is pretty is pretty new technology not just technology but um, okay let's say technology. Uh, but a lot of a lot of stuff a lot of stuff need to be discussed how 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 it should be implemented in a right way. So we have a lot of work to do. Yeah, indeed, and that's what you guys uh, come in as well. Um, yeah, I hear that um, you were saying that it's a bit of um, it's built on the traditional stuff that we've already got, obviously. And how what um can I move to Brian? What is your view on this thing? What what is um Metafi like in your point mm. of view? 
Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm I'm not a typical DeFi guy, but I love to share my view. So I think metaverse, uh, just I I said, uh, it's a continuation of our technology and human society, right? So that's the nature. So that means uh, for economy base is really important. Financial services on top of that is really important. So, uh, so that's why well, the metaverse, metafi, uh, in metafi is really foundation blocks. But, uh, but again, what's the difference uh, between the DeFi we have now? So like DeFi we have now is more uh, focused on the, well, I would say fung uh, fungible token, right? So it's a financial uh, model to, to create the liquidity and uh, well, whatever. So in my view, in metaverse, everything is an asset, is a tokenized asset. So which is not just a fun, uh, fungible token. Uh, actually, uh, maybe the whole 99% is non-fungible token. And uh, beyond that, non-fungible token is not just a physical or virtual asset, but it can be uh, also cover uh, a lot of services. Right, so basically, uh, that's uh, metaverse is uh, Web three That's our the Internet of Value. Uh, so that's everything in 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 that world is uh, value based. So no matter it's a physical goods, virtual goods, or services. So that's why because of the categories are so broad. So uh, then the financial services on top of those uh, digital assets will be hugely different, but uh, well connected. Uh, so I, that, that's my view uh, for, for this uh, metaverse, uh, the financial services in metaverse. That's why, I, in my view, the digital asset, asset layer is really important. Then the financial protocols on top of that is really important. And uh, we currently maybe just uh, explored uh, 5% or, or even 1% of the financial services on top of all kinds of digital assets. Yeah, that's why I'm pretty op optimistic to that. So uh, it's difficult to define clearly right now. It's, uh, many things are so dy dynamic, but I think we are heading to the right di direction. Yeah, back to you. That is a good thing. As long as, as we are heading to the right direction, no matter it's 1% or 5%, there is so much more to explore and to find out. And that is the excitement all about as well, I guess. Um, can I have, um, Victor, what is your view on this, on Metafy? Well, uh, actually, I, I agree with uh, Brian a lot. <laughs> I, I would like to uh, talk uh, some uh, what is happening now and my idea about the future of metaverse projects and the financial possibilities, because uh, we talk about uh, too many technology things, but so I am going to uh, mention some others. So <clears throat> also, I agree with the uh, brand for the metaverse pro projects uh, are still in the early stage. Uh, Big three users uh, now use Meta uh, MetaMask wallet to enter, uh, not uh, not others, but human. Uh, inter uh, like uh, brain or something, uh, uh, head or something. Uh, the, the I mean interface. Yes. So uh, based on the uh, tech, uh, blockchain tech, uh, technology, the so the way users uh, sign with a private key is much safer uh, than the traditional way of username and password, and it's much open. Uh, Mm, the, the user ID is is the address, which is a unique address. Uh, in in this address, users store their important crypto assets in. Uh, from project side, uh, various meta meta uh, projects have already launched uh, or are going to launch their own token uh, or NFTs. Uh, those assets need to be managed managed. Uh, uh, circulate, uh, circulated and tra traded. Uh, and in addition, uh, that, like uh, like lending and uh, other more, much more complex, complicated uh, derivatives. Uh, I think that is what uh, MetaFi is about at this moment. Um, 
Personally, at this stage, I'm I'm more interested in metaverse projects with uh, games ele elements, and I think uh, such projects uh, will develop better in the future. I think uh, because uh, games and uh, metaverse projects have, have more visual visual uh, impact and at least more immersive, and there's a, a, a more clear consumption scenario. Uh, there uh, there are good economy model uh, design we will uh, it will bring users in uh, yeah, very effective and in such a uh, project there will be more than one token and uh, uh, a rich variety of uh, nfts uh, with enough assets uh, metafy can play its uh, value then so uh, on the other hand we we notice that the rare uh, I mean, uh, various uh, well-known character we see. Uh, they are also parti uh, participate in the investment of uh, projects in the game uh, same uh, universe uh, metaverse field. So, uh, with sufficient investment, the development of this field will be, uh, I mean, greatly accelerated. Uh, of course, uh, how to follow the trends uh, is also a trend. Uh, it's uh, also a, a challenge uh, to us, uh, and also an opportunity to, uh, for a project, uh, a DeFi project like us. So I think that's it. Oh, thank you so much, Victor. Um, can I have uh, Kevin and also share your views on this as well? What is Metafy like? Would it be a brand new thing, or will it involve a little bit of traditional stuff as well? Okay, thank you. Um, we talk about um, Mentify, so it's uh, like a Mentaverse uh, plus DeFi, right? As you mentioned, so it's a Mentaverse, and then the second level is Mentaverse Phi. So uh, to realize the function of uh, Mentaverse first, so we must first meet many uh, network conditions, like including like um, we need to involve uh, improving uh, network latency. And also, as Harry mentioned, there is a symmetric network bandwise, right? And also improves the speed of the overall uh, networks as well. So uh, we we need to have this uh, uh, infrastructure to support the uh, our future computing platforms. Uh, based on all this, then we talk about the Mentafi. So the the Mentafi uh, inherits from the um, some possibility of DeFi. So, and it's uh, uh, it's developed, driven by some key factors, uh, such as uh, like uh, the uh, interaction of risks, and also like the uh, game file, uh, we can call it game fileification uh, of, of finance, which means we turn finance into game, right? And also uh, the development of finance uh, uh, infrastructure uh, and also some improvement of the DAO service stack. Uh, so we, we so now then we have uh, like a DAO, uh, we have the finance uh, game file, and we have a risk control. Then we have this everything. So uh, we need this uh, similar improvement as well. So this then this makes the uh, uh, future of uh, mental fine. So for us, we do some of the applications based on all these uh, necessary improvements. For example, we do the uh, estate funds, which is buying the uh, estates, uh, the virtual estates. So it's kind of like a, a mental flight for sure. And then we do estates like rental, uh, also it's a re rental. So it's also kind of a mental flight. And also we uh, perform a trading platform uh, for virtual estates. So it's like we, we use the uh, uh, metaverse assessment uh, to trade the, to trade each other, so peer to peer. So these are we are trying to implement all these uh, mental file into realities. So hopefully the basic uh, computing platform, and also the necessary service improvement will be ready soon. Yeah. 
Oh, thank you so much. You're basically moving uh, all things that is in relation to real estate into the virtual world. Well done. Um, and um, can I have Henry to share your view as well? Do you want me to repeat the question, Henry? Uh, yeah, that's okay. I, I, okay. I heard the Sweet. question. Okay. So, yeah. So, for metaverse, <laughs> so there are two kinds of metaverse. So, one is a centralized. So, it's uh, you know, built and by the Web2 giants. Okay. And another one is open metaverse. So MetaFi is about open metaverse. So you know, for the Web2 giants, when they build the metaverse, because they already controlled and the user's traditional data and profile. And in the metaverse, they collect more information, bio-information, everything from users. So it can be very dangerous. So, you know, from the the, you know, the, the, the penalty on the DD and also the split of TikTok and moving the servers and to the United States, right? So we, 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 this shows Web2 and, you know, developed to the like point that, you know, it cannot be, you know, cannot be, you know, further developed by any users. And, uh, a lot of sovereignty countries actually put a ban on the Web2 and in the future about the metaverse. So the, the Web2 metaverse cannot grow. So the MetaFi is all about open metaverse. Okay. In the open metaverse, a digital token, assets, if they want to circulate, they should have some standards to cross chain. So it's all about the metadata. So for those digital tokens, the metadata should have standards and across all kinds of blockchains so that for any application that and connected into the metaverse and their wallet and should walk the users through the whole you know, metaverse and use any of the tokens, they can make payment and for cross-chain. So this is about a metaphor standards and we need to build, okay? And upon this, actually, you know, before this is actually the social linked data. It's critical because, you know, a lot of projects claim they are Web3, but actually not many and project belongs to Web3 because Web3 is about data ownership and those projects don't give the profile to users. They all have the centralized servers. Okay. So when we talk about MetaLife, we should have the, you know, the semantic web way to organize the user's data and return ownership. We also should have a semantic like definition and the standards for all the digital tokens, NFTs, wearable NFTs, and for the for the, you know, all the like uh, a digital tokens, digital assets in this way. Henry, can I yeah. just get you to briefly explain what do you mean by semantic? Oh, yeah. Semantic web is a critical and a definition for machine readable, like personal data. Okay. So it's about the link, social linked data. Uh, you know, I explain in some like, like a simple language. So for, for one user, and they hold user data in one place, for example, and the user own their data, but they can bring their data to other applications. So that's called Web3. So user own their data, and the application doesn't own user data, but the user can bring the data to any game they want to play, to any social applications, and they want to use. Okay, so they own the data and the value. So actually, not many you know, applications claim to be Web3, they realize that. Actually, none of them have done that yet. So MetaLife is the first one who actually store the user data in their cell phone. Okay, and also the decentralized social graph in their cell phone, in the microchain in their cell phone. So whenever they wear 
wherever they walk, they carry their own data. So even there's no internet, they still can communicate with other MetLife users peer to peer without internet. And they can make peer to peer payment, offline payment with each other. So that's called a decentralized social network. So that's the foundation for the whole open metaverse. Because any games, any like a vertical social network built upon the MetaLife protocol, users can own their data and roaming among all applications, actually all the metaverse. And all, especially, you know, some application built upon, you know, different variety of blockchains. But because we take care of the metadata from the tokens from every blockchains, so the metafy standards can be unified. Therefore, we provide the whole metafy for the metaverse. So within a multi-chain wallet, for example, in the MetaLife, then there will be a personal assistant to help the user to make payment across chains because there are so many applications, so many gaming, and their NFT is on different blockchains. So MetaFi is all about the standards and the easy to use for the users. Okay. Cool, thank you so much. Yeah, easy use. Definitely, that is very essential. And that is what um, Web3 is all about as well. Um, the last question, we are running out of time. We've wasted a bit of time at the start, unfortunately. But um, I just have this one last question. If um, every one of you can give a brief answer, that would be great. Um, so what financial inf infrastructure is needed to guarantee the functionality of Metaverse? Shall we start with um, Victor? Victor, please. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. So, uh, I, I think that the, the, there are many uh, more and more uh, demands are coming out in the future. So it's hard to say a guarantee in the future. But I think I can talk something about we, what we can do uh, to fit uh, currently that for, to fit current uh, metaverse projects. So uh, take a uh, VPG uh, Lindy as an as an example. I think. Uh, we should become more uh, flexible and either uh, as a kind of uh, plug-in to interact with crypto assets uh, produced by the metaverse projects. So uh, uh, the VP V2 version we are developing now uh, is working in this di direction. It will be a trustless and a permissionless version. Uh, anyone can simply create their own Realm, realm, uh, based on WPG's product. Uh, I mean, uh, protocol uh, factory, factory. Uh, meanwhile, this realm can achieve protocol level lending and borrowing with WPG's main protocol. Uh, in terms of uh, security, uh, risk can be also well controlled uh, because the risk between realms and our main protocol are independent. There is a there is no uh, systematic uh, risk for our main protocol, uh, but users should pay great attention to the risk of uh, those realms. Uh, about the uh, business uh, scope, uh, in, in, in the beginning, it will be token to token lending, like uh, Brian said uh, just now, uh, he, uh, the token to token level is, will be first, and uh, in the future, uh, the development of, of uh, as the development of uh, basic infra infrastructure like new Oracle with better algorithms, uh, it will be uh, upgraded to NFT, to token lending, or uh, other things. I, I, I just uh, talked something about what we can do to fit. So I think that's uh, my something about my shame. My, my shame. So, uh, Thank you so much. I, I would hear others. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. How about um, next up? Eugene, what do you think? What kind of infrastructure is needed to guarantee the functionality of uh, Metaverse? Okay. If you can answer that in one minute, that would be great. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Metaverse is 
uh, is a virtual space. Is a virtual space or augmented reality. And imagine my glasses is just a way to be engaged and to to go to metaverse. And okay, I'm in virtual world, like in a game or some virtual space. What is the main issue here from financial perspective? That's not just my thoughts. That from that kind of case from from I mean from real virtual life. That uh, for example, what happens in real life when we uh, when we make some purchase or some tra- transaction, we get one time password on our phone, and kind of such biometric things. Where I can I can scan my face, I can scan mm-hmm. my finger on another phone, and that and this is the way of my identification how I confirm transaction. The main issue in metaverse and in virtual space at all is like how we identify all customers and confirm transactions because we are unable just to show them on a screen, which might be like uh, captured somewhere or uh, be seen somewhere. Uh, So my personal opinion is um, what should be improved and what should be done is like, or it should be done on hardware side. On hardware side, we need to have biometrical stuff like a scanner of our fingers in glasses, in glasses of virtual reality. For example, please confirm this transaction and please just place your finger to confirm you are who you are exactly and you are the person who makes this purchase. And that's so this, this is a way of identification that's, uh, that's most important from my perspective because we we do care a lot of uh, a lot of customer identification and uh, making KYC and such procedures. So this is very important from my perspective. Exactly, identification. That is a very good one. Um, how about um, Ryan? What's your view? Oh yeah. So well, let, let me just talk about uh, from my angle. So uh, because I'm focused on blockchain and NFT. So basically, I, I think, uh, well, everything in metaverse is a digital asset. So it's not coming from uh, for free, right? So either you buy it or you make some efforts to earn it. So that's uh, some financial model we need to build into this uh, uh, framework. At the same time, you know, the NFT asset is so diversified. It's not just a collectible. There's a huge um, uh, scope for the functional utility type. Uh, that's why you know we in in such financial uh, well infrastructure. So we should not just guarantee the asset trading value, uh, but also support a lot of uh, like a utility or functional value of the digital asset. Uh, for example, if you buy a music, a piece of music, uh, it's not just uh, hold it and listen to that, right? So you need to uh, like. Well, uh, make profit uh, from different ways, from a rental market or whatever ways. Uh, so, so that's why we need to uh, make sure. So it's very diversified financial tokenomics model to support all kind of uh, uh, related digital assets. So it's more complicated, but it's very interesting. At the same time, you know, in order to make sure it. A, a digital asset become a good digital asset. So in such infrastructure, we also need to do a lot of uh, basic stuff. For example, the asset, it should be self-contained, in my words, self-contained or self-interruptible uh, 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 with uh, on-chain and off-chain data. Uh, be, uh, without that, nobody wants to buy a half digital asset. Right. At the same time, it should be interoperable across different blockchain economies. Uh, nobody wants to buy something in a separate island. Uh, so with those, uh, and, and also the, uh, no matter it's on-chain and off-chain data should be permanent. Right. So that's uh, we need we need to connect to some decentralized uh, good data service. Uh, plus. In order to really make a very good uh, blooming business on top of those assets and financial model, we need to provide decentralized data service, uh, which is totally different from Web2. So uh, so by saying that, so I, I think once we have such a, a 
attributes uh, connect to those uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, we can see a great future for that. But just one more example. For example, uh, because uh, I, I think, uh, uh, for example, a, a, a creative community, they love to uh, uh, create uh, such digital assets in the metaverse, but key requirements for them to collect uh, loyalty and collect uh, a license uh, fee, right? So in order to make it happen and uh, everlasting, we need to make sure we have a good metadata standard and we need to have a good infrastructure to support the interoperability. Without that, nobody wants to create some, uh, well, dumb uh, uh, music or, or uh, artworks. So I yeah, think... I think I hear, I think yeah. I hear you, you are saying that we need to create more use cases and also interoperability yeah. between different services and also this data service. Um, yeah, very, very good points. Thank you so much. Can we uh, move to Kevin, please? Oh, okay, thank you. I have uh, actually I've mentioned a part of it in the last uh, last conversation, uh, but I think the metaverse, the future of the metaverse, is not only it's neither a virtual world uh, nor a mapping uh, reflect of the real world. So it's a combination. It's a world which uh, reality and the virtual are completely interwined and integrated. So uh, to achieve this, uh, we really need. Uh, improve the infrastructure. We meet a lot of issues before that we cannot uh, use the metaverse uh, properly, for example, uh, using 1,000 people uh, online uh, at the same time is quite difficult. So uh, there's a way, there's a lot of uh, play uh, uh, space uh, to improve, like the network latency, like the bandwidth and the network speed, and also like the, uh, uh, like the improving the uh, number of the people's uh, um, active at the same time. So uh, currently also the metaverse is running on the different uh, layer one systems. So uh, so something to optimize the uh, basic technology like layer one uh, chain will be also necessary uh, to like to reduce the transaction cost like to, like I said, just uh, like uh, uh, improve, improve the interaction numbers and also uh, to realize the expansion and uh, to facilitate user to easy participate uh, in the metaverse. All of these are quite necessary as a fundamental of the uh, metaverse. Yeah. Cool, thank you so much. And uh, Henry, what is your view? Oh uh, yeah, so the Web3 should be an ecosystem from the infrastructure. Uh, this infrastructure should include, should be inclusive, you know, to those people, emerging countries. They even don't have internet. So we are talking about the metaverse. Okay, fortunately, and low Earth orbital satellites was launched and, uh, you know, Starlink, and uh, many other uh, companies launched the lower orbital satellite so that the whole humanity can be connected and into the internet and the metaverse within 10 years. Therefore, we are trying to build the whole infrastructure for the humanity. For example, smart mesh, and we use mesh box and to build the mesh network from bottom up from bottom up, it's different from top-down approach of the carriers. So from bottom up, and the blockchain power those, those people underserved, so they can easily form a network and uh, get connected into the internet. And at the same time, they build actually the local edge cache together for the meta life, met metaverse, because the metaverse needs a lot of a rendering of the 3D and the scenery. So this infrastructure, the, is, the hardware infrastructure is quite important. And then upon this, and the infrastructure for the personal data link, for the social network is critical for metaverse. And upon social data link will be the standards for the digital assets across China. So the meta file. 
what we mentioned is our topic today. So with all this infrastructure together, we call it a better internet. And the switching mode in this picture is not packet switching anymore. It's token switching. I defined it in 2017. So token switching combine the data and value together. That's build our metaverse. Okay, so the infrastructure right now is under building. And uh, I believe it will be getting mature and within two to three years. Okay, it uh, will be before the headset because, you know, people feel dizzy to get immersive thing uh, with the headset. So that probably take another five years. Metafy can be can be ready and within two to three years. And the social data link layer will be prepared, metalized and within this year, but get mature within three years. So five years later, we are going to see the metaverse with Metafy. That, that sounds very promising, actually. Five years is not that far away. It's just a blink of the eyes. Well, um, Sorry that guys, well, I know that we have a lot more to talk about, but, but we're running out of time. Thanks very much again, Kevin, Eugene, Victor, uh, Henry, and Brian for joining us today. I really admire how passionate and innovative and determined you guys are in terms of uh, finding solutions to build a more ideal digital life for us all and all the best for your future endeavors as well. Um, with the ending of this session, we come to the end of this Web3 Disruptors Week. I really appreciate the support from all our supporters and guest speakers who are doing awesome work for the industry. Thanks again for all of you. And all in all, hopefully, when Web3 becomes a solid reality, the world is a much better place for us all. Um, surely, we will have many more exciting things and topics to look forward to and talk about in the near future. So see you, see you all next time. Thank you. Thank see you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.